Good afternoon, everyone. Slightly afternoon. Uh, I hate to break up what feels to me like a family reunion, uh, but we're actually going to have a meeting. Um, I'm Frank Farrow, and I can't tell you what a pleasure it is uh, to welcome everyone here. Uh, here to this lovely space, and we have the Pew Center to thank for that, um, but it's a special pleasure to uh, welcome you to this event. I think it means a lot to many of us. Um, this is the first in what will be a series of public policy forums uh, honoring Harold Richmond. And what I'm going to do for about oh, the next 10 minutes or so is talk about why we're doing that, a little bit about Harold, and then we'll break for lunch and uh, We've left time during the day. We thought we can't have this group of people together without time to talk and socialize and break bread together. So we'll do that, and then we'll come back and begin the program of the day, and I'll go through the agenda for you. So this is just a little bit of a setting the stage in the larger sense of why we thought this was important to do. Um, Harold and his good friend and colleague, Tom Joe, who many of you knew, uh, started the center uh, about 30 years ago. We say about because Judy and I can never remember quite what the exact dates were, but as far as we can tell, 1979, a little over 30 years, as a policy arm of the University of Chicago. And if you knew Tom and Harold, they were the original odd couple. Um, Tom was brilliant, um, sharp-edged, irascible at times. Uh, he was a political genius, which was eventually certified by the MacArthur Foundation. Um, and, and in everything he did, he was passionate about his work. And Harold was brilliant and reflective. And as we all know, had that natural warmth of personality and a ready smile. He was a natural teacher and mentor to many of us. He was shrewdly strategic, and in everything he did, he was passionate about his work. So they were made for each other, as you can tell, and as an organization, we couldn't have had two better parents. We've been honoring Tom's memory for about 10 years through our Tom Joe Fellowship Program. And I'm delighted, I'm looking around, we have a former Tom Joe Fellow here, Andrew Hammond, uh, who you will hear from a little later, and we have our current uh, Tom Joe Fellow, Hannah Weiss, who is back around the table. And to honor Harold, we decided we'd launch a series of public policy colloquiums in his name. And before I talk about those, I thought it would be appropriate to hear from Harold in some of his words. So we're going to see a very brief excerpt from a larger talk, a larger discussion he was giving. Um, and he starts out with a reference to the United Nations Convention for the Rights of Children. And I'll clarify that we are not going to debate uh, whether the United States should or should not be a party to the United Nations Convention. Some of us have different opinions on that. Um, but Harold uses that as a springboard to talk about his vision of the future and what he would want for children. Um, the uh, probably 10, 15 years ago, the United Nations created something called the, um, oh, the um, Convention on the Rights of the Child, in which there was a big long international process that asked exactly that question. Is, what are the basic rights that children are entitled to when they are born into this world? Because that's, the, that's really the essence of the vision is what, what, what do we owe to kids uh, that is fundamental to their existence as individuals? And, uh, the only country in the world, I think maybe one of two or three, that has not adopted this convention is the United States. Um, uh, to its everlasting shame, I think. Um, but here are some of the states that kids are entitled to adequate food, 
adequate shelter, adequate clothing, an adult who cares for them and pays attention to them and works with them, a sense of the future for themselves, and the basic health care and basic education which will equip them to make a place for themselves in the world. That's not very complicated. But we haven't gotten there yet. And if I had to articulate a vision, it would be that simple, that children who are born into this country have those rights and that those rights are actually met by the society that they live in. Those of us who were lucky enough to work with Harold know that what he talks about there, that is that every child is healthy and educated and whole in a nurturing family. What many people here have devoted their lives to is what he devoted his whole working life to. You'll find a note about Harold, if you haven't seen it yet, in the packet on the back of the program. There's a little bit of a biography. And I hope you have time to read it. I'm just going to mention, in addition to those facts, one thing that has always struck me so much about him. And that was that Harold grew things. He grew ideas. And some of the earliest and the best ideas about the informal supports that kids need, about what needs to be there in a community for children to thrive, came from Harold long before many of us were talking about social networks or connectedness. He grew organizations, which I always find a sort of surprising thing, but if you look at his fingerprints, he grew organizations around the world. The center, CSSP, is one of those, and he grew it as a combination of policy development and hands-on work in public systems and in communities. He left what I would say is an enormous legacy at the School of Social Service Administration at the University of Chicago. He founded the Chapin Hall Center for Children, um, which is a great colleague organization of many of us. It does invaluable research and evaluation and contributes that to the field. Deb Darrow is here representing Chapin Hall. Matt Stagner, who wanted to be here, could not be here. And then if there is such a thing as a green thumb uh, for people, Harold had it. His gift for bringing out the best in literally hundreds, I would say thousands of people, was not really a mystery when you watched him go about that work. It came from the deep and personal and insightful interest in each one of us, in everyone he engaged with, and his ability to help people use their talents to give back to others. It was quite an amazing um, form of growing, and we all benefited from it. But in case all this talk about Harold's warmth and generosity uh, leads people to think um, that there was anything fuzzy about Harold, there was not. He was very sharp in his thinking. He was very determined in his thinking. And so as we came to think about the kind of discussions we'd like to carry on in his name, this is what we came up with, and this is what we hope today will be about. We wanted a discussion of challenging ideas, including ideas where there would be some controversy. And that's why we have people in this room, although we're very fond of one another, who have differing opinions on some of the topics we're talking about today. That's fine. We wanted to focus on topics that had some relevance for the future. And we think that the questions we're going to address today of what do we look for in evidence when we're making decisions about policy or when we're deciding on investments? Is that evidence base broad enough? Are we looking broadly enough? And how do we look ahead and build an even richer and more inclusive and a broader evidence base? Those we think are really important for the future of better outcomes for kids and families. So we're delighted that so many people were willing to engage in that discussion today. And we wanted to spark discussion that had meaning for people on the ground. 
I am particularly delighted that Tana Evely is going to share her thoughts because we have a number of practitioners here today. We've heard from even more. Um, we look forward to having discussion of these same issues by the people who have to make decisions day to day because they are making a difference on the street now. And so we hope that this, uh, this discussion, the ideas have relevance for the doers of the work. Um, we're going to break for lunch in a minute, but before we do, I just wanted to thank um, I have so many thank yous that uh, we would miss lunch if I tried to do all of those, but I'm not going to, um, but a few. Uh, we are joined today by Harold's wife, Marlene, and his sons, Andrew and Robert, and Robert's wife, Kristen, and I can't tell you how much it means to me and I think to all of us that you are here, so thank you very much for being here. Um, second, this whole forum is possible because of the generosity of, of several people, um, and in particular, the Casey Foundation, the Annie E. Casey Foundation, and the Ed McConnell Clark Foundation. And I want to thank uh, both Patrick and Woodrow Woody for um, the support for this event. I have um, never seen people react so quickly. Harold had ties to both foundations. And so it was not a hard sell, uh, and you were both very generous in responding and supporting and allowing the gathering to happen this quickly. Thank you very much for that. And then a, um, uh, I also want to thank, in that regard, um, a friend of Harold's and of Marlene's and of the family, Pastora San Juan Cafferty uh, in Chicago, who, those of you who know Pastora, I see smiles on some people's faces. Pastora is a force of nature, and she was generous and supportive um, of this gathering, and so thanks to Pastora. She could not be here today. It's her birthday, so happy birthday to Pastora, uh, and I'm sorry she couldn't be here. And then finally, I'm not going to name individuals, but thanks to a huge number of people, a huge percentage of the people in this room who were colleagues and friends of Harold's who contributed to thinking about how we do this. You're going to hear from many of them. Um, you'll recognize them by that uh, green thumb I talked about, by the faint imprint of uh, green on their, uh, on their forehead as you go about the day. It sort of binds many of us uh, together. So thank you to all of them. In fact, I'd like you to um, I'd ask you to give them a round of applause. This has been the work of many, many people, and I'd also like to thank Lisa Kyler Miller of our staff who put so much of this together. So thank you. All right, we are now ready for lunch, and so here is the drill for that. Uh, lunch is going to be available right uh, in the next room. It's buffet style. Uh, please get a plate, come back in, enjoy lunch together. You don't have to sit in the same seats. You can shift a little bit uh, throughout the day. And then at 1.15, we will regroup. We'll talk about the rest of the agenda, and we will uh, start with our keynote presentation by Lee Shore. Thank you again for being here.